Part two, the assaults. Chapter 10, the scream begins in my, uh, my lower back and works its way up through my body only to jam in my throat. I am Avox mute, choking on my grief. Even if I could release the muscles of my neck, let the sound tear into space, would anyone notice it? The room's in an uproar. Questions and demands ring out as they tr try to decipher Peter's words. And you, in 13, dead by morning. Yet no one is asking about the messenger whose blood has been uh, 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 re replaced by static. <sighs> A voice calls the others to attention. Shut up! Every pair of eyeballs, uh, 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 every pair of eyes uh, 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 falls on Hamish. It's not some big mystery. The boy's telling us we're about to be attacked. Here, in 13. How would he have, he have that information? Why should we trust him? How do you know? Hamish gives a growl of frustration. They're bidding him bloody while we speak. What more do you need? Katniss, help me out here. I have to give myself a shake to free my words. Hamish is right. I don't know where Peter got the information, or if it's true, but he, but he believes it is. And there... Uh, uh, uh. I can't say aloud what Snow's doing to him. You don't know him, Hamish says to Coin. We do. Get your people ready. The president doesn't seem alarmed, only somewhat perplexed by this turn in events. She mulls over the words, tapping one finger lightly on the rim of the uh, on the rim of the control board in front of her. When she speaks, she addresses Hamish in an even voice. Of course, we have prepared for such a scenario. Although we have decades of support for the assumption that, that further dis, uh, 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 direct attacks of 13 would be uh, um, um, counterproductive to the capital's cause, nuclear missiles would release radiation into the atmosphere with uh, 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 incalculable environmental results. Even routine bombing could badly damage our military compound, which we know they hope to regain. And, of course, they invite a counter-strike. It is conceivable that, given our current alliance with the rebels, those who those would be viewed as uh, 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 acceptable risks. You think so? Says Hamish. It's a shade too sincere, but the subtleties of irony are often wasted in 13. I do. At any rate, we're overdue for a level 5 security drill, says Coin. Let's proceed with the lockdown. She begins to type rapidly on her keyboard, uh, uh, authorizing her decision. The moment she raises her head, it begins. There have been two low-level drills since I arrived in 13. I don't remember much about the first. I was in intensive care in the hospital, and I think the patients were ex exempted and the complications of, of, of removing us for a practical drill outweigh the benefits. I was vaguely aware of, of a mechanical voice instructing people to congregate in yellow zones. During the second, a level two drill meant for... Uh, 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 minor crises, such as temporary quarantine while citizens were tested for contagion during a flu outbreak, we were supposed to return to our living quarters. I stay behind a pipe in the laundry room, ignore the pulsating beeps coming over the audio system, and watch a spider construct a web. Neither experience has prepared me for the wordless, eardrum piercing, fear inducing sirens that now permeate 13. There would be no disregarding this sound, which seems designed to throw the whole population into a frenzy. But this is 13, and that doesn't happen. Uh, Bob's guys finicking me out of command al along the hall to a doorway and onto a wide stairway. Streams of people are, are converging to form a river that flows only downward. No one shrieks or tries to push ahead. Even the children don't resist. We descend, flight after flight, speechless, because no word could be heard above the sa this sound. I look from a I look for my mother and Prim, but it's impossible to see anyone but those immediately around me. They're both working in the hospital tonight, though, so there's no way they can miss 
Miss the drill. My ears pop and my eyes feel heavy. We are coal mine deep. The only plus is that the farther we retreat into the earth, the less shrill the sirens become. As it, it's as if they were meant to physically drive us away from the surface, which I suppose they are. Groups of people begin to peel off in, into marked doorways and, and still bugs direct me downward until finally the stairs end at the edge of an enormous cavern. I start to walk straight in and Bog stops me, shows me that, that I must wave my schedule uh, in front of the <sighs> scanner so that uh, I am accounted for. No doubt the information is going to some computer somewhere to make sure no one's gone astray. Uh, the place seems unable to decide if it's natural or man-made. Certain areas of the walls are stone, while uh, uh, steel beams and concrete heavily reinforce others. S sleeping bunks are hewn right into the rock walls. There's a kitchen, bathrooms, a first aid station. This place was designed for an extended stay. <sighs> White signs with, uh, with letters or numbers are placed at intervals around the cavern. As Bugs tells Finnick and me to report to the area that matches our assigned quarters, in my case, E for compartment E, Plutarch strolls up. Ah, here you are, he says. Recent events have had little effect on Plutarch's mood. He still has a happy glow from BT's success on the airtime assault. Eyes of the forest, not on the trees. Not on, uh, not on penis punishment or 13's imminent blasting. Cadmus, obviously, this is a bad moment for you. What with penis setback? But you need to be aware that others will be watching you. What? I say, I can't believe he actually just downgraded Peter's dire circumstances to a setback. The other people uh, in the bunker, they'll be taking their cue on how to, to react from you. If you're calm and brave, others will try to be as well. If you panic, it could spread like wildfire, explains Plutarch. I just stare at him. Fire is catching, so to speak, he continues, as if I'm being slow on the uptake. Why don't I just pretend uh, uh, I'm on camera, Plutarch? I say, yes, perfect. One is always much braver with an audience, he says. Look at the courage Peter just displayed. It's all I can do not to slap him. I've got to get back to coin before lockdown. You keep up the good work, he says, and then heads off. I cross to the big letter E posted on the wall. Our space consists of a 12 by 12 foot square of stone floor. Uh, 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 uh. Delineated by painted lines. Carved into the wall are two bunks. One of us will be sleeping on the floor and a ground level cube space for storage. A piece of white paper coated in clear plastic reads bunker protocol. I stare fixly, fixly at the little black specks of the sheet. For a while, they're obscured by the residual blood droplets that I can't seem to wipe from my vision. Slowly, the words come into focus. The first section is entitled, On Arrival. One, make sure all members of your compartment are accounted for. My mother and Prim haven't arrived, but I was one of the first people to reach the bunker. Both of them are probably helping to relocate hospital patients. Two, Go to the supply station and secure one pack for each member of, uh, of your compartment. Ready your living area. Return packs. <sighs> I scan the cavern until I locate the supply station, a deep room set off by a counter. People wait behind it, but there's not a lot of activity there yet. I walk over, give her compartment letter, and request three packs. A man checks the sheet, pulls the specified packs from shelving, and swings them up onto the counter. After sliding one on my back and getting a grip on the other two with my hands, I turn to find a gr group rapidly forming behind me. Excuse me, I say as I carry my supplies through th 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 the others. Is it a matter of timing, or is Plutarch right? Are these people modeling their behavior on, on mine? Back in our space, I open one of the packs to find a thin mattress, bedding, two sets of great clothing, a toothbrush, a comb, and a flashlight. On examining the, the contents of the other packs, I find the only discernible difference is that they contain both gray and white outfits. The latter will be 
will be for my、uh, my mother and Prim in case they have medical duties. After I ma- make up the beds, store the clothes, and return the backpacks, I've got nothing to do but observe the last rule. Three. Away further instructions. <sighs> I sit cross-legged on the floor to await. A steady flow of people begins to fill the room, claiming spaces, collecting supplies. It won't take long until the place is full up. I wonder if my mother and Prim are going to stay the night at wherever the hospital patients have been taken. But no, I don't think so. They were on the list there. I'm starting to get anxious. <laughs> When my mother appears, I look behind her into a sea of strangers. Where's Prim? I ask. Isn't she here? She replies. She was supposed to come straight down from the hospital. She left ten minutes before I did. Where is she? Where could she have gone? I squeeze my lids shut tight for a moment to track her as I would prey on a hunt. See her react to the sirens, rush to help the patients, nod as they gesture for her to descend to the bunker, and then hesitate with her on the stairs. Torn for a moment, but why? My eyes fly open. The cat. She went back for him. Oh no. Uh, 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 my, my mother says, "We both know I'm right. We're pushing against the incoming tide, trying to get out of the bunker. Up ahead, I can see them preparing to shut the thick metal doors, slowly rotating the metal wheels on either side inward. Somehow, I know that once they have been sealed, nothing in the world will conceive the soldiers to open them. Perhaps it will even be beyond their control." Um. Mm-mm. Indiscriminately shoving people aside as I shout for them to wait, the space between the doors shrinks to a a yard, a foot. There are only a few inches left when, when I jam my hand through the crack. Open it! Let me out! I cry. <sighs> the consternation shows on the sh- soldiers' faces as, as they reverse the wheels a bit. Not enough to let me pass, but enough to avoid crushing my fingers. I take the opportunity. Uh, to wedge my shoulder into the opening, Prim!、Uh, uh, I holler up the stairs. My mother pleads with the guards as I try to wriggle my way out. Prim! Then I hear it—the faint sound of footsteps on the stairs. We're coming! I hear my sister call. Hold the door. That was Gail. They're coming. Uh, 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 I tell the guards, and they slide the doors open up about a foot. But I don't dare move, afraid they'll they'll lock us all out until Prim appears, her cheeks flushed with running, hauling buttercup. I pull her inside, and Gail follows, twisting an armload of baggage sideways to get get it into the bunker. The doors are closed with a loud and final clank. Uh, uh, uh. What were you thinking? I give Prim an angry shake and then hug her, squashing buttercup between us. Prim's explanation is already on her lips. I couldn't leave him behind, Katniss. Not twice. You should have seen him pacing the room and howling. He come back to protect us. Okay, okay. I take a few breaths to calm myself, step back, and lift Buttercup by the scruff of the neck. I should have drowned you when I had the chance. His ears flatten and he raises a paw. I hiss before he gets a chance, which seems to annoy him a little, since he considers hissing his own personal sense of contempt. In retaliation, he gives the helpless kitten mew that brings my sister immediately to his defense. Oh, Katniss, don't tease him," she says, folding him back in her arms. He, he's already so upset. The idea that I've wounded the brute's tiny cat feelings just invites further taunting. But Prim's genuinely distressed for him, so instead, I visualize Buttercup's fur uh, uh, lining, lining uh, 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 a pair of gloves. An image that has helped me deal with him over the years. Okay, sorry, we're 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 under the big E on the wall. Better get him cells in before he loses it. Prim hurries off, and I find myself face to face with Gail. He's holding the box of medical supplies from from our kitchen in twelve. Sight of our last conversation, kiss, fallout, whatever. My game bag slung across his shoulder. If Peta's right, these didn't stand a chance. He says, "Peta, blood like raindrops on the window, like wet mud on boots." Thanks for everything. I take your stuff. What were you doing up in our rooms? Just double checking. He says, 
Run 47 if you need me. <sighs> Practically everyone withdrew to their spaces when the door shut, so I get to cross to our new home with at least 500 people watching me. I try to appear extra calm to make up for my frantic crashing through the crowd. Like best fooling anyone, so much for setting an example. Oh, who cares? They all think I'm nuts anyway. One man, who I think I knocked to the floor, catches my eye and rubs his elbow resentfully. I almost hiss at him too. <sighs> Prim his buttercup and stall in the lower bunk, draped in a blanket so that only his face pokes out. This is how he likes to be when there's thunder, the one thing that, that actually frightens him. My mother puts her box carefully in the cube. I crouch, my back supported by the wall, to check what Gail managed to rescue in my hunting bag. The plant book, the hunting jacket, my parents' wedding photo. <sighs> and the personal contents of my drawer. My mocking J-pin now lives with Sinus outfit, but there's the gold locket and the silver parachute with a spiral and penis pearl. I knot the pearl into the, into the corner of the parachute, bury it deep in the recesses of the bag, as if it's penis life and no one can take it away as long as I guard it. The faint sound of the sirens cuts off sharply. Coin's voice comes over the district audio system, thanking us all for an... Uh, uh, exemplary evacuation of the upper levels. She stresses that this is not a drill, as Peter Malark, the District 12 victor, has possibly made a televised reference to an attack on 13 tonight. <sighs> That's when the first bomb hits. There's an initial sense of impact followed by an explosion that resonates in my innermost parts, the lighting of my intensities, the marrow of my bones, the roots of my teeth. We're all going to die, I think. My eyes turn upward, expecting to see giant cracks race across the ceiling, massive chunks of stone raining down on us, but the bunker itself gives only a slight shudder. The lights go out, and, and I experience the disorientation of total darkness. Speechless human sounds, spontaneous shrieks, Ragged breaths, baby whimpers, one musical bit of insane laughter, dance around in the charged air. Then there's a hum of, of a, a, a generator, and a dim wavering glow replaces the stark lightning that is the norm in 13. It's closer to what we had in our homes in 12, when the candles and fire burned low on a winter's night. I reach for Prim in the twilight, clap my hand on her leg, and pull myself over to her. Her voice remains steady <sighs> as she croons to Buttercup. It's all right, baby. It's all right. We'll be okay down here. <sighs> my mother wraps her arms around us. I, I allow myself to feel young for a moment and rest my head on her shoulder. That was nothing like the bombs in eight, I say. P probably a bunker missile, says Prim, keeping her voice soothing for the cat's sake. We learned about them during the orientation for new citizens. Uh, 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 they're designed to penetrate deep in the ground before they go off, because there's no point in bombing 13 on the surface anymore. Nuclear? I ask, feeling a chill run through me. Not necessarily, says Prem. Some just have a lot of explosives in, in them, but it could be either kind, I guess. <sighs> Uh. The glue makes it hard, hard to see the heavy metal doors at the end of the bunker. Would they be, would they be any protection against a nuclear attack? And even if they were 100% effective at sealing off the radiation, which is really unlikely, would we ever be able to leave this place? The thought of spending whatever remains of my life in the stone vault horrifies me. I want to run madly for the door and demand to be released into whatever lies above. It's pointless. They would never let me out, and I might start some kind of stampede. We're so far down, I'm sure we're safe, says my mother wanely. Is she thinking... <laughs> Is she thinking of, of my father's being blown to nothingness in the mines? It was a close call, though. Thank goodness Peter had the wherewithal to warn us. 
the wherewithal, a general term that somehow includes everything that was needed for him to sound the alarm. <sighs> the knowledge, uh, the opportunity, the courage, and something else I can't define. Peter seemed to have been waging a sort of battle in his mind, fighting to get the message out. Why? The ease with, with which he manipulates words is his greatest talent. Was his difficulty a result of his torture? Something more like madness? Coin's voice, perhaps a shade grimmer, fills the bunker, the volume level flickering with the lights. Apparently, Peter Malak's information was sound and we owe him a great debt of gratitude. Sensors indicate the first missile was not nuclear, but very powerful. We expect more will follow. For the duration of the attack, citizens are to stay in their assigned areas until otherwise notified. A soldier alerts my mother that she's ne needed in the first aid station. She's reluctant to leave us, even though she'll only be 30 yards away. We'll be fine, really, I tell her. Do you think anything could get past him? I point to Buttercup, who gives me such a half-hearted hiss. We all have to laugh a little. Even I feel sorry for him. After my mother goes, I suggest, why don't you climb in with Prim? Why don't you climb in with him, Prim? I know it's silly, but I'm afraid the bug might collapse on us during the attack, she says. <sighs> it... If the bones collapse, the whole bunker will have given way and buried us, but I decide this kind of logic won't actually be helpful. Instead, I clean up the storage cube and make Buttercup a bed inside. But I pull a mattress in front of it for my sister and me to share. <sighs> We're given clearance in, a, in small groups to use the bathroom and brush our teeth, Although showering has been canceled for the day, I curl up with Prem on the mattress, double layering the blankets because the cavern emits a dank chill. Buttercup, miserable even with Prim's constant attention, huddles in the cube and exhales cat breath in my face. Despite the disagreeable uh, conditions, I'm glad to have time with my sister. My extreme preoccupation since I came here, no, since the first games, really, has left little attention for her. I haven't been watching over her, though, the way I should, the way I used to. After all, it was Gail who checked our compartment, not me. Something to make up for. I realize I've never even bothered to ask her about how she's handling the shock of coming here. So, how are you liking 13, Prim? I offer. Right now? She asks. Yes, we both laugh. We both laugh. I miss home badly sometimes, but then I remember there's nothing left to miss anymore. I feel safer here. We don't have to worry about you. Well, not the same way. She pauses, and then a shy smile cuts crosses her lips. I think they're going to train me to be a doctor. It's the first time I've heard of it. Well, of course they are. <laughs> They'd be stupid not to. They've been watching me when I help out in the hospital. I'm already taking the medic courses. It's just beginner stuff. I know a lot of it from home. Still, but it's plenty to learn, she tells me. That's great, I say. Prim's a doctor. She couldn't even dream of it in 12. Something small and quiet, like a match being struck, lights up the gloom inside me. This is the sort of future a rebellion could bring. What about you, Katniss? How are you managing? Her fingertip moves in short, gentle strokes between Buttercup's eyes. And don't say you're fine. It's true. Whatever the opposite of fine is, that's what I am. So I go ahead and tell her about Pita, his uh, deterior deterioration on screen, and how I think they must be killing him at this very moment. But her cup has to rely on himself for a while because now Prim turns her attention to me, pulling me closer, brushing the hair back behind my ears with her fingers. I stop talking because there's really nothing left to say and there's this piercing sort of pain where my heart is. Maybe I'm even having a heart attack, but it doesn't seem worth mentioning. Katniss, I don't think President Snow will kill PETA, she says. Of course she says this, 
It's what she thinks will calm me. But her next words come as come as a surprise. If he does, he won't have anyone left you want. He won't have any way to hurt you. Suddenly, I am reminded of another girl, one who has seen all the evil the capital had to offer. Johanna Mason, the tribute from District 7 in the last arena. I was trying to prevent her from going into the jungle uh, 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 where the Jabber Jays mimic the voices of loved ones being tortured. Uh, uh, but she... Uh, brushed me off saying, they can't hurt me. I'm not like the rest of you. There's no one left I love. Uh, 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 uh. But I know Prim is right that Snow cannot afford to waste Peter's life, especially now, while the Mockingjay causes so much havoc. He's killed Senna already, destroyed my home, my family, Gale, and even Hamish are out of his reach. Peter's all he, he has left. So, what do you think... Uh, 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 uh. They'll do to him, I ask. Prem sounds about a thousand years old when she speaks. Whatever it takes to break you, 